In this example, we're going to look at a data set of 20 cars, with each car having their speed recorded in kilometers per hour. So we're going to calculate the three measures of central tendency, known as the mean, median, and mode. Firstly, the mean. The mean is also known as the average. And the mean of a data set is the total of the data measurements divided by the number of data points contained in that data set. So let's have a look at an example before we go on to our car speed example. So up here on the right, we have a formula for the mean simply represented by x bar. So the mean is equal to the sum of x, which are the values that we have, and we divide it by the number of values that we have. Now in this data set, we have 10 values, so that's represented by n. And we add up those values, that's what the sum of x represents. So adding up these 10 values, like here, dividing by the number of values will give us an average of 6.6. .6. So let's take a look at our example here, our data set for cars. Rather than doing this manually, Excel will allow us to do this with a function. So we'll go into formulas, insert your statistical function bar, and look for average, not mean. It's the cursor is set up nicely within the bracket, so all we have to do is click and highlight all the values that we want to put into our formula and press return and we get an average speed of 44.25 kilometers per hour. Let's take a look at median. The median in this case of any data set is simply the middle number. But what we have to be careful of in this case is do not take the median or the middle number from a data set that's already given to us. Make sure that the data set is arranged from lowest to highest in ascending order or from highest to lowest in descending order. So let's take a look at our example. So here we have a data set given in this form, but we cannot choose the middle number from it. Firstly, we have to arrange it. In my case, I'm going to arrange it in ascending order. So four being the lowest number, 10 being the highest number. I'm going to use this formula here. And this formula is very useful irrespective of whether you have an even or an odd number of values in your data set. So we have 10 values here, so that's an even number. Okay, so with that, n is represented by 10, 10 plus one divided by two. Why we're dividing by two is we're getting half. That's the halfway point or the middle number known as the median. So 10 plus one gives us 11. We divide that by two, gives us five and a half. Our median will be the five and a half number. Let's see where that takes us. Let's count up five and a half. There's one, two, three, four, five and a half is here. There's no number represented by five and a half. If we go descending, one, two, three, four, five and a half. So the halfway point is between the two sixes in our data set. So in order to calculate the median there, given that there's no number of five and a half, we take the number either side of five and a half, which is the fifth number and the sixth number. We add those together, divide it by two, giving us six. It's the very same if you have an odd number in your data set. For example, if I drop to 10 here, there's nine numbers. So nine plus one is 10 divided by two. So that'll be the five or the fifth number. One, two, three, four, so six is the fifth number in ascending order or descending order. One, two, three, four, the same number is found. So irrespective of even or odd, we can still use that one formula to help us identify what the middle or the median number is. With a larger data set, it's more difficult, so we let Excel do it for us. So I'm gonna copy these and put them into a new column. You'll find your on the top of your formula bar in Excel where it has said to A and that will allow us or Excel will allow us to arrange that in ascending or descending order so it just automatically when I clicked it there it went on descending I like to do it on ascending order so we have the lowest speed to the highest speed so let's find the median so I'm not going to use this formula I'm just going to use a function that Excel delivers to us already so again go to insert statistical and I'm going to look for the median and here we have it here. And it's set up that the cursor is nicely in between the two brackets. And I'll highlight the first to the last, click return, and the middle number is 46. So that's nicely done. It allows us to 
create that without having to do any further calculation. Excel does it all perfectly for us. Let's go for the third measure of central tendency, which is the mode. The mode is just simply the most frequently occurring number. So which number occurs most often? There mightn't be any. So let's take a look at our original example. So we have a data set here. There's no need to be, you can arrange it in ascending and descending order if you wish. But let's take it here. We could highlight the number of values that are occurring most frequently, in this case six, and hence the mode is six. If you go back to where we had the example here, it might be a lot clearer. There's only one four, two, there are two fives, three sixes, one seven, one eight, one nine, and I had deleted the 10, one 10. So the mode is six. So we can do that here. I'm just going to place it into this box and I'm going to let Excel find it for me without me having to count up any number that happens to be occurring most often. So let's again go to formulas, insert, statistical, and alphabetically I will go for mode single. Don't go for mode multi, go for mode single. And the, again, the cursor is nicely in our brackets. On either column, I'll go for the original data set in its original form. And 46 happens to be the number that occurs most frequently. So I hope you learned a lot from this. Check out the other videos and why not just download the PDF on economicrockstar.com forward slash statistics.